Hi, everybody. I'm Carl Hyacinth, and I'm happy to be participating in Kids Read Now. Um, I was going to read a little bit uh, from Wrecker, which is a, a new book of mine that'll be out in September. And it takes place in Key West, which is one of my most uh, favorite places. So I'll just read you a little bit from the beginning. And uh, I hope you get a, get a good feeling for the book. Wrecker rides a heavy swell through the Northwest Channel. Halfway across, he's already thinking about the return trip and hoping the wind doesn't kick up. Broccoli soup probably wasn't the smartest idea for lunch. The fishing is good on the patch reef. Wrecker fills the cooler with yellowtails and mangrove snappers. Shrimp pink clouds along the horizon promise another hour of daylight. Plenty of time to get back to Key West. As he pulls up the anchor, he hears another boat, a high powered outboard, judging from the sound. His eyes track a silver rooster tail and spray recklessly wide of the navigation markers. Boneheads, he thinks. With a roar, the outboard's props slam into a shoal. The monster engines grind to a stop and agitated voices rise across the water. Wrecker could pretend he's out of earshot, but the code of the sea says you don't leave fellow mariners stranded. So he motors the half mile or so to the shallow flat where the speedboat is mired. It's a sleek 40 footer, maybe 42 with gray purple glitter wrap, twin lightning bolts painted along the pointy bow and four mammoth Yamaha 300s mounted on the stern. Pure Miami, thinks Wrecker, 1200 horses stuck in the mud. He's never seen this boat before. Three men aboard are waving him closer. He eases his skiff to the edge of the flat and eyes the ugly trench gouged by the wayward craft, which rests tilted to one side in a cloud of royal silt. One of the guys, stocky, shirtless, thick gray hair and a silver mustache, throws a rope to Wrecker. Can you tow us off the flat, kid? He calls out. We'll pay you good money. The rope splashes a few yards shy of Wrecker's skiff. The man hauls it in and makes another throw that also lands short. My boat's not big enough to move yours, Wrecker says extra loud so that they can hear him over the wind. Oh, come on, dude. First he was kid, now he's dude. Wrecker guesses bro will be next. He gestures at his motor, an old Evan Root 40. That's all I got for power. You better call Sea Tug. The man consults with his companions. Wrecker suspects they don't want to ask the Sea Tug company for help because the tow captain would be required by law to notify the Coast Guard what happened. Since the Florida Keys are a national marine sanctuary, the damage caused by the grounding could cost the speedboat's owner big bucks. Wrecker is careful to keep his skiff clear of the shallows as the tide coming in or out Silver mustache yells. Rising, Wrecker calls back. How long till it's deep enough for us to float off? Wrecker says three hours, maybe four. The man curses before huddling again with his friends. Wrecker can't see their faces or hear what they're saying. There's no name painted on the side of the go fast, which is weird. Most guys put colorful names on their speedboats unless they're professional offshore racers. And professional racers usually don't run aground. I got to go, Wrecker tells the man, before it gets dark. Yo, hang on. Silver Mustache lobs something underhanded to Wrecker's skiff. It's a half-empty beer can with a wad of cash folded into the pop tab opening. Is this a trap, Wrecker thinks. The tow rope comes flying again. This time, Wrecker catches it and ties it to a steel eye on his transom. Silver Mustache knots the other end to the bow of the go-fast boat. Wrecker shifts the Evan Root into gear and guns it. Nothing happens but noise, smoke, and churning bubbles. The purple speedboat, which weighs 10 times more than Wrecker's skiff, doesn't budge an inch. Wrecker isn't surprised. He twists the tiller handle back to the neutral position. I told you, he shouts the men, your boat's too heavy. Try again, Silver Mustache barks. Come on, bro. Wrecker shakes his head. I don't want to blow up my motor. He unhitches the speedboat's tow rope and lets the current sweep it clear of his propeller. So three hours and we can get out of here? Silver Mustache asks. Maybe four. Depends on if the wind switches. Wrecker cocks his arm to toss back the beer can crammed with cash. No, keep it, Silver Mustache shouts. For what? I didn't do anything. You tried. Big deal, says Wrecker. Keep the money. Seriously, Silver Mustache tells him. But yo, just remember, you never saw us, okay? Because we were never here. Got it? Wrecker nods uneasily. One of the other guys on the speedboat says something to Silver Mustache, who scowls and tells him to shut up. Wrecker is pretty good at reading lips. What's your name, kid? Silver Mustache asks. Charles. Charles what? Good luck with the tides, 
So Wrecker twists the throttle out of neutral and aims to skiff across the channel toward Key West. The ride back isn't rough, though the sun is down by the time he reaches the dock. Fortunately, there's a light bulb that stays on all night over the fish table. Wrecker quickly sharpens his knife and starts cleaning his catch, tossing the heads, bones, and guts in the water where the jacks and baby tarpon are waiting. A stray cat watches the feeding frenzy from on top of a wooden piling. Afterward, Wrecker seals the fillets and sandwich bags and rinses down his fishing rods with fresh water. Before getting on his bike, he pulls the soggy cash out of the beer can and he counts it. Then just to be sure, he counts it again. What the bleep, he thinks. So that's how it starts. 